Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in for another video. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you an update on the Viper Mori eel. So if you watched my last video about the two banana Mori eels that I purchased, I told you that if the Viper Mori still isn't eating about two weeks after I put the banana Mori eels into uh, his tank, then I will have to uh, put him into his own system and employ some tips and tricks to uh, basically trick him into eating so that he can then finally go into the 1000 gallon system with the giant mori and the tessellata. So in this video, you, you will find out whether or not I was successful and uh, hopefully you will learn something. All right guys, so it's been two weeks and uh, as you can see, I'm starting to um, remove the live rock from this aquarium and that is because I have to get the Viper Mori out of this tank and into a quarantine tank with just some PVC piping and simply trying to get this eel to feed, you know, every single day. Um, I'm not able to do that when he's in a setup like this where he barely pokes his head out every once in a while and I, I just can't reach, you know, his head with a feeding tongue. So, um, yeah, um, he's going to go into a 32 gallon uh, Fluval Megaplex and uh, that should make it a lot easier for me to get him to eat. Okay, so here we have the Fluval Megaplex. This is a 32 and a half gallon aquarium and this is now where the Viper Mori resides in. And as you can see, his head is sticking out right here. So he still hasn't eaten yet, but I guess the first sign of success is that he has discovered PVC as a hiding place. So when he was in a 270 gallon tank, I added PVC in there as well and he never used it. Um, he rather stayed in the live rock, even though this is an eel that likes to squeeze himself into the tiniest, you know, uh, nooks and crannies, crevices. So I'm glad he now enjoys PVC piping. And uh, from now on, it's going to be a daily task for me, multiple times a day actually, to try to feed him and dangle nose, I mean food in front of his nose and hopefully one day he will accept it. Um, just wanna give you a quick close up of his teeth. Very impressive dental work, but uh, yeah, hopefully he's going to make use of it soon again and then um, I can hopefully teach him only to feed from my from uh, my feeding sticks and not eat any live food and then he can finally go into the big aquarium in the back. So I just removed the PVC pipe in order to do a water change and get rid of some of the white stuff on the bottom and just wanted to give you guys a rare glimpse of the Viper Moray. So he's obviously not happy right now because he has no hiding space and the light is on. He doesn't like that either. So I'm not going to film this for too long, but I just wanted to give you a rare glimpse of him since he's so, uh, you know, shy and reclusive. Um, he still hasn't eaten, but if you look at his body, he's not all, you know, fish and bone, I mean, skin and bones. He's still in very good shape. So I'm not too, too worried. Uh, obviously I want him to eat at some point, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's otherwise very healthy, no signs of illness, you know, just very skittish, very shy, you know, stressed still after two months now, having been caught from the wild, you know, being sh shipped from the wild to the fish store. And then after a month I picked him up and now it's been over a month and uh, yeah. So it's a very, very shy animal. You have to be very, you know, gentle with him. Um, his teeth are obviously no joke, but an animal like this would only really bite you if you would, you know, do something really stupid and corner him. But see his mouth wide, <laughs> nice and wide open so he can swallow some pretty decent sized fish. So I'm glad I actually put him out in this tank before he became a threat to my banana eels because now that I think about it he probably could have eaten at least a smaller one but yeah he will be going into the 1000 gallon tank once he finally starts accepting food from me 
And uh, then once he does start accept eating food from me, then I will put some mollies in here. And if the mollies don't get eaten, then I can finally put him into the tank with the other eels. And if you are a subscriber or recent visitor of my channel, you know I have a giant moray, um, beautiful animal, and a tessellata moray. And they are similar in length, uh, obviously a little bit longer than the viper moray, but a lot thicker, so I don't think the viper moray would be a threat to the eels. But obviously, you know, the cleaner wrasses, the damsels, the mollies, the clownfish, um, the gobies. So there's some fish in here that if I don't make sure that the viper moray is becoming, you know, used to me feeding him, and if I was just, just toss them in here, these fish could be at risk. So that's why it's important for me to uh, continue doing what I'm doing right now. And hopefully I can wean him off from live food. And then he will be really, really happy in an aquarium like this. So hopefully this will happen soon. It is now nighttime. And I guess the good thing is that now he is starting to come out at night and looking for food. I did try to feed him, but unfortunately, he still doesn't accept food. But it is progress that he is coming out because he wasn't even doing that before when he was in the 270 gallon tank. So nice to see him losing some of his shyness, but and of course, discovering PVC piping. So I'm really happy about that. Yeah, I think we're getting closer, maybe another week or so. I am treating this tank with uh, something called metronidazole for um, internal parasites, uh, which could be a reason why he's not eating. But um, yeah, I will give you another update. Hopefully the next one will be with him eating some food. Okay, another update. Now it's about two weeks later. And unfortunately, the viper moray is still not eating. Um, but I, what I did do is I added a coral banded shrimp, or banded coral shrimp, however you like it. And this is a shrimp that I've seen uh, videos of the, that he is actually forming a symbiosis with the viper moray. Um, I think you can also get scarlet skunk cleaner shrimp, but these are a lot cheaper. And since I've seen videos that these actually, uh, you know, form a symbiosis with viper mora eels, I decided to go with one of them. And I've seen the viper mora come out a couple times up to like here and, you know, get his mouth cleaned a little bit. But other than that, he's still very, very shy and, uh, yeah, not sure what to do next. But uh, the next update will let you know. All right, another update on the viper mora. So he is still not eating anything. Um, and if you count the number of weeks since he was caught from the wild, we are now past 11 weeks. So it's been a very long time for him since he's eaten anything. Uh, but I believe he is actually getting closer because the other day when I tried to feed him, he almost took a fish, a frozen fish, a, a smelt fish. But uh, yeah, unfortunately he didn't. But uh, if you look at his jaw, you see that his uh, upper and lower jaw are formed in a way that he cannot fully close it, and his long teeth uh, contribute to that as well. And because of that, I was able to uh, stick a fish, you know, between his jaws, and he almost, he was annoyed, but uh, he almost took it, but uh, at the last second, he didn't. So, yeah, I think next time uh, I have a chance to do that, he will probably take the fish, and once he has something in his belly again, I think it's gonna, all hell is gonna broke loose and he's gonna eat like crazy. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully he's going to be a lot closer than to moving into his uh, new aquarium, I mean the 1,000 gallon tank. And yeah, so because I'm seeing a glimmer of hope with him, um, I'm going to have to start prepping this, uh, or his move into the 1,000 gallon tank. I have already begun uh, prepping the 1,000 gallon at, uh, aquarium for the arrival of the Viper Moray. And as you can see here, I put in a net 
because I am trying to catch uh, some of the fish in here that may be at risk if the viper mori goes in here. And those are, you know, the clownfish in the back. Um, they, some of the chromies that I have here and some of the mollies, um, some damsels that I have there. And I don't think he's gonna mess with the monofish. Um, down here we have a new arrival, an emperor angel. Uh, I don't think he's gonna mess with him. He can hold his ground pretty well. And yeah, so basically anything that decides to go into this trap over the next couple of days, um, I will take out of here. And then, yeah, basically, it will all come down to whether or not he can get along with the Tessalata and the giant moray. Because if he doesn't, then it's going to be a huge pain in the ass to get this eel out of here because he likes to squeeze into the tiniest crevices and it's just a nightmare to uh, you know, get him out of, uh, even out of the other tank without having to uh, take all the rocks out. So if that was to happen here with any, any problems with him, I would literally have to take everything down just to try to catch him. So, yeah, but I don't think, um, I really don't think anything would happen. That is because the Tessalata eel is the more aggressive of the two, but he never has never bitten anyone. So he only, um, sometimes he's kind of in a bad mood and then he would just open his jaw a little bit to let the giant moray know that he doesn't want him to come any closer, but there's never been any fighting. And the giant moray is, you know, a real teddy bear. So he's super shy, super calm, you know, never aggressive to anyone. Neither eel has ever eaten any of my tank mates, uh, no matter how vulnerable they are. Um, they're mollies, they sometimes swim right in front of their mouths, you know, uh, completely oblivious to how dangerous these fish can technically be, and nothing has ever happened. So I would be really surprised if they, you know, are aggressive towards the viper mori. But it would be the first time that these two eels are introduced to a third eel. So for a moment I thought about putting the two banana eels in here and putting the viper back into the 270 gallon tank where he was in before. But this is eventually, you know, where he is going to end up. So might as well do it now. Uh, he's also almost three feet. So I don't like, you know, an eel that is three feet or longer to be in a tank that is only six feet long. So here I don't have to worry about him, you know, not having enough space. And these two guys hopefully will be welcoming him, you know, with open arms <laughs> into this aquarium. So. Yeah, um, the next update may already be about the Viper Mori moving into this tank. So obviously I hope that by the time that happens, he has started accepting food for me. Um, I hope that uh, I can put some mollies into his um, tank that he's in now and he, that he doesn't then eat them. So yeah, that would be ideal. Otherwise I would be a little bit limited, you know, what I could put in here. So yeah. Uh, next update, like I said, will likely be about him in the tank, but I'm or putting him into the tank, but I'm not sure. But uh, just stay tuned. Okay, another update on the Viper Moray. So this update is actually a very positive one, and that is because he finally started to accept food. So it's been almost 12 weeks now since he was caught from the wild, and the last time he ate until yesterday. So what I used to do was I would just dangle some food in front of his nose and uh, hopefully I was hoping that he would take it but he would always be so shy and scared that he would never do it and uh, basically just retreat into the pipe system. But um, usually I change the water in this aquarium um, once a week, almost a 100% water change uh, every Saturday. So what I was doing before was every Friday I would just lay some you know frozen fish on the bottom of this aquarium, see if he would take it. But uh, he never did, but then last night I tried it again and uh, walked away, which may have made the uh, biggest difference. And when I came back, I noticed that all the fish were, or the fish that I put in was gone. And as soon as I noticed that, I added some more frozen fish and he ate all of them. So that's really, really good. 
Since we've been waiting so long for the viper mori to eat, I'm going to uh, try to capture it on camera. So what I'm going to be doing now is uh, here we have some smelt fish, which is very similar to silver sides that are being sold at the pet store. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to grab one and I'm going to um, inject some silicon concentrate uh, into one of these fish with a syringe. So basically inject it through the mouth into the stomach. And that is because uh, since he hasn't been eating anything for 12 weeks uh, up until recently, he's very vitamin and mineral deficient. And uh, by me enhancing his food a little bit, um, he will become healthy again, uh, you know, if he has any deficiencies and uh, should, you know, be a lot happier with his food and his overall health. All right, I just put in the fish in front of his PVC pipe and have to be pretty far away and zoom in with my lens so he doesn't see me because otherwise he won't eat it. And, oh, Looks like this time he just pushed it out of the way, so I may have to place it back to uh, his entry. Alright guys, the moment has finally come. The Viper Moray is now going to be moving into the 1000 gallon aquarium. I just finished uh, changing the water. So the way I'm going to be doing this, and unfortunately uh, part of it I won't be able to film because I'm by myself, but basically um, what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be just using these plugs and uh, basically just pluck one end here and then uh, he's going to retreat in and then I pluck the front and then I'm just going to grab the whole pipe and then I'm just going to be putting him into the tank and then hopefully uh, everything will go fine from here. <laughs> it's very exciting. Um, like I said, the Mori eels that I have already, the Tesselat and the Giant Mori, uh, they've never been with another Mori, so hopefully everything will go fine. Um, I believe everything will go fine in terms of aggression towards the fish because he has proven to be uh, eating you know, frozen uh, fish that I just put on the, on the substrate and then he just goes and grabs it. So what I'm going to be doing is every night I will be putting in some uh, fish and then uh, that will also satisfy my two spiny lobsters that I have in there and uh, any other invertebrates that I have in there, lots of uh, hermit crabs. So even if the viper moray doesn't grab the fish, um, somebody else will so and maybe one day he will even eat out of my hand so my main concern is aggression of you know towards the other two eels or vice versa so that is something we have to find out but uh, yeah uh, I I was contemplating the idea of putting the viper uh, back into the 270 gallon tank and put the two banana moris in here because they're so they're much smaller, they're only two feet, they're very fast, and uh, the, the two eels in here have never uh, shown any aggression towards any other living animal. So, but then the viper mori is simply uh, too large for the 270 gallon. I don't like seeing him, you know, uh, being three feet long and then just uh, being stuck in there. It, it reminds me of, you know, these two eels being in there who are also a little bit over three feet now. It's just not big enough, so this is perfect for the Viper Mori, as long as you can get along with the other two. And uh, all this PVC piping that I have all the way around should uh, help, you know, uh, create little territories if they become territorial. 
So yeah, I'm very excited for that part for him. It's been a long journey. He was stuck in this too small quarantine tank for over a month and uh, finally started to eat despite all the stress that he's experienced. So now it's time to put him in. So, as you just saw, that was not as easy as, as I thought. So, he really didn't want to come out of his pipe. And, uh, yeah, very anxious to see what's going to happen the next couple of weeks. And uh, unless something major happens sooner, um, I don't think there's going to be any more update. Um, so, because now that he's in a new tank... He may actually go on another, on another hunger strike yet again, so, but I'm not quite sure yet. So thank you so much for watching this uh, episode. Um, hopefully everything will go fine. If not, I will provide an update, and uh, I will provide updates anyways because this is a very rare animal, and a lot of you guys are interested in the Viper Moray and you know how to take care of them. So yeah, hopefully um, I will have some updates pretty soon and until then thank you so much for tuning in and i hope to see you again next time